For all of you who listen to Mac East Second Floor Studios presents Submersion and own an Android device, do me a favor. Go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android device. I use the app and I love it. I can search for the podcasts I want to listen to, select them as favorites, and have them all just a click away. Make sure to set Mac East Second Floor Studios as a favorite so you don't miss any of our new episodes. Again, the app is the Podcast Republic app, available on Android devices. It's episode 29. Woo! Woo! And this starts off a new month for us, right? Which will turn into, probably turn into like seven weeks or something like that. It very well could. This, I don't know what you call it, next saga we're taking you guys on is very exciting. It's one I'm super excited for. It is, hold on. (laughs) Japanese movie month. Was that, was, that a, was that a gong? That's it's a gong. That sounded it's not a very terrible. Good it's a little, that's a little offensive. But <laughs> <laughs> fine. Maybe. Um, again, uh, the views of Kyle does, do not reflect the views of everyone on the, uh, <laughs> on the show. But yeah, no, I'm excited for this too. This is definitely different. They, they have a lot of submarine stuff. I think in Jap- Japanese, there's a, there's a lot of submarines that show up in things like the Godzilla movies and stuff like that. He's always eating yes. submarines and stuff like that. But subcentric wise, we we got a good roster of really subcentric films that cover like monster movies, but also like what you would think of as war movie kind of stuff too. Yes, yeah, pretty. It'll be fun. Pretty good uh, array. And I know Alex is very excited. We even have a anime movie in I'm the works. Very excited. Not in the works. Sorry, one that we're gonna be watching. We're definitely watching that one. Yeah. Very excited. You guys are going to like it. I can tell you. You're going to like it. Did you already watch it? No, but I just oh. know. Oh. You guys are okay. all going to give it above eight. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. That's a guarantee. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here first from Alex. Alex said that we get to kick him off the submarine if we don't all give it eight. All we'll right. see. All right. <laughs> Anyways. If, if you guys kick me off, I'll just build my own submarine and then chase after you guys for about Brom, 200 years. Brom, we've heard the so story years. before from Brom. Brom has claimed that when, when we kick him out, that he's going to start World War Brom, but also start his own submarine podcast and stuff. So oh, no, I'm it not really talk- makes I, you wonder. You got to walk the I'm walk. Not talking about, talk I'm not talking about a submarine podcast. I'm talking about building an actual submarine and hunting you guys down. Oh, Wow. That's brutal. That's like, much more dangerous. For like 200 years. <laughs> just another podcast. And my submarine might also fly. Oh, wow. Really? That's a little preview. Mm-hmm. A little uh, foreshadowing for the episode tonight. Now you guys tonight. are getting it. Okay. Yeah. There we go. And we won't even expect it. We'll, we just have our lion monster that we build, and we'll be like, hey, get after mu- Mustard Man. It's no big deal. Yeah. And then, you know. <laughs> What animals really like mustard? Yeah, I don't know. It'll probably be a shark and a mustard bottle put together. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's an evil genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of evil genius you need in these uh, movies like this. Yeah. I love it. All right. So we are down one person tonight. No rest, Brom. Rest in peace, Brom. We ejected him out of the, finally ejected him out of the uh, tube, the torpedo tube. Um, and we'll wait for his return. And see if he uh, starts the war or not, starts the rebellion. But we'll probably just welcome him back. No, we'll probably because he's to. our best friend. Like he's my best friend. Wow. Yeah. You guys really have a strong connection. I like uh, it. Yeah. Have you not noticed our chemistry on every episode so I far? Get, I saw you with like a half of a heart tattoo. Does he have the other half? Well, it's, we're kind of like uh, the Rachel and Ross of of this whole podcast thing where everyone's like, will they, won't they? What's going on? There's like the chemistry's real crackling. So yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Can't wait to see how that unfolds. Yeah, a little wink to our uh, our listeners here. Like, you don't know. Maybe something's going to happen there. <laughs> ah, dive, 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 dive. <laughs> ah, yeah. I know I've missed that for you a few weeks. Was great. Yeah, it made me happy. But at least I, you know, got it this time. Right. And I better not have the same debacle I did with um, the alarm for last month. Yeah, or, that will hasten your exit. <sighs> As the captain. I wouldn't even doubt it. You could mutiny me right now. <laughs> I wouldn't even care. What began as an innocent conversation among friends would soon spiral out of control and later be referred to by future generations as the eighth wonder of the modern world. Mac East Second Floor Studios takes you on the journey of your lifetime as your captains, Alex the Mustard Man, the artist formerly known as Brom, Jamie the Brain, 
Kyle El Capitan, and Zach the Backbone present Submersion. Okay, set that timer to like 50 minutes because uh, we're going long on this one. Uh, no. All right. Zach, you've been a little quiet. Yeah. You want to tell us? Actually, that's Alex's job. I can't give away Alex's that's job. Just, so what's up? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> listeners, uh, for this week, we watched a great science fiction film. Um, I guess it was uh, released in 1969 in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called Latitude Zero, and it was a lot of fun. So you guys are going to enjoy it. Latitude Zero, yes. baby. It's great. Yeah. Uh, it stars Joseph Cotton. And I do want to interject real quick. Sure. Joseph Cotton was famous for being in what is widely considered or has been ranked as the top film of all time, Citizen Kane. But he was also in this terrible movie starring William Shatner called White Comanche, where William Shatner plays twins, one of them Native American, one of them uh, a white sheriff in the West. So he's also in that. So I think he should be best remembered for White Comanche. Yes. <laughs> and this movie. I think you've, met, you've mentioned that before uh, on yeah, this podcast. Yeah. It's one of the greatest twin movies of all time, although it's a, kind of a one-note movie. You watch it for 15 minutes and you're like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, Shatner playing twins. That's real funny. And then 15 minutes later, you're like, kind of over it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just twins. So right. <laughs> going to probably turn this movie off because it's terrible. All right. So Joseph Cotton from White Comanche. Yeah. Um, he is Captain Craig McKenzie. He's captain of our sub, the Alpha. Cesar Romero. Doctor, eh, he is Dr. Malik, leader of what I would call an evil empire. That's right. Of Blood Rock. Richard Jacal. Uh, Academy Award nominated actor, Richard yes. Jekyll. There you go. Uh, he plays Perry Lawton. He's a photographer slash reporter with Akira Takarada. Takarada? Nice. Takarada. Yeah, he plays Dr. Ken Tashiro. He's an oceanographer from the Submersible. And he's in a lot of these Toho movies that come out. But apparently this is, I think, I believe this is the only film where he's not uh, dubbed for, for English. Like he's actually, actually speaks in his own voice. Oh, okay. But speaking English, yeah. And then I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's the film debut of Linda Haynes as Dr. Ann Barton. Hmm. She was scantily clad, and she was supposed to be even less clad. But Seriously? I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. okay. A little bit later. All right. All right. So, we open in 1969 at Latitude Zero. Bum, bum, bum. Where Japanese researchers are uh, studying something called the Cromwell Current. This is a real thing uh, that actually exists. But anyways. No, it's not. Yes, it is. And uh, it, tr it truly is. Uh, is it like the Enigma machine? Enigma machine, also real. a real thing. Yes. <laughs> Great. Um, we get some hilarious green skin effects. So like this is kind of, you know, it's 1969. So you get these things where everyone seems like almost distorted and stuff as they're doing these crazy huge uh, scenes of things moving all over the place and they're dumping stuff in the ocean, in the middle of the ocean, all that. Mm -hmm. And so they have to use these crazy green screens. And it kind of happens throughout the film that they kind of have to cobble this together with a lot of green screen uh, action. And uh, the hope is that they're going to be studying this current and uh, speed up the travel of submarines, almost like the jet stream for jets. Like they right. have this current and the submarines can use it. And so they put it in the ocean and they start speaking like a lot of scientific gibberish. They're just saying like a lot of different stuff. They're talking about the DSL, which was like some sonic layer, a uh, deep sonic layer or something that reflects uh, sound. So, uh, oh, yeah. And they're talking about trying to get photos of like squids reflecting sounds and all that type of And this of stuff. is also all totally real. But at the time, it had already been kind of solved. So like in the early 60s, there was a science paper that talked about like what they were. And they were fish that kind of – they they'd have a lateral – uh, movement throughout the day and night that way they would come up to feed and then go back down to the bottom of the ocean and it would cause these things and boats used to report of having a phantom bottom also known uh, scientifically as a ghost butt i believe mm. that's a, the scientific term sounds pretty good and they'd say oh there's like this ghost butt uh, or phantom bottom and it looks seemed like it's like a buried island or something a floating island like but beneath yeah. the surface um and or sunken island uh but it was really just these like fish that would you were delving up. Heavily into this. Well, that's what I'm saying. We got a lengthy movie. You got to up this. You got to up the time <laughs> for this recap because I'm going to smooth science stuff. Anyways, I'm going to stop stop there with all the science stuff. There is an eruption of an underwater vo volcano that kind of blows them off of the the mooring that they are on the ship. It's, I guess it wasn't really even a submersible, right? It was a bathosphere. Yeah, we um, had we had three people who were lowered. We have yeah. Doctor Ken Tashiro. Yep. We have some guy who I mean we don't even really see for a lot of the movie. French guy. Yeah, and then we have. Um, Perry Lawton, the, the photographer, yeah. photographer, yeah. and he even tries to smoke inside 
the submersible. He claims he wasn't going through. He's just yeah, taking like, his pipe. Yeah, I'll just grab my pipe. Yeah. It's just you near my camera. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> it's just a near, near my camera. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a pizza, a pizza pie. <laughs> uh, and then uh, they so they get they get broken off of the boat, and this eruption kind of blows them away, and they're all knocked out, unconscious. And we see the figures of some uh, uh, some scuba divers coming uh, over to find them. And they go up to there and they grab the bathysphere and bring it up to – and hook it up to a uh, – what we see as a advanced submarine, a futuristic submarine. Yes. And they pull this bathysphere up into the submarine. And next time we see them, they're waking up and they are totally healed, at least two of them. They are. And there's a um, sexy looking lady right Oh, yeah. There's a sexy doctor. And they're like, you're a doctor. What? Because it's yeah. like a woman doctor. And they're like, get the fuck out of here. No way can women be doctors. Yeah. Right? Because even the – even uh, – Perry was like, well, this Dr. Barton's kind of young, isn't she? She doesn't look much like a doctor. Well, Mr. Lawton, uh, what's a doctor supposed to look like? Ooh. And they're like, oh, man, oh, I need yeah. to reevaluate myself. They really did. Yeah, they did They did what I do on this podcast, which is really set you guys straight on your sexism. I'm like, what do you What do you think? Of course she can be a doctor. Yeah. But she's also very scantily clad because her breasts are basically like out. She yeah. has like a bra, like a, a, a backless bra. That's what she's wearing for the mm -hmm. most part. It's just like cups on her breast. One thing, I know you already talked about the science about all this, but those guys that went down there to save that little ship, they were just like in a, like a Speedo. Wouldn't they die because it would be too cold? Well, unless they went into the immu immunization bath. Think about that one. Mm. Oh, they could have. Immunization bath saves oh. everything. Yes, it does. But anyway, we see, I don't know if you can call him our main character or not, probably. Um, Captain McKenzie. Captain McKenzie. Captain this, Mac, baby. He's got this super Sweet sexy scarf. outfit. Yeah, he's, he's got like, a scarf. He's got these gold chains on. Yeah, he's like, uh, hey, guys, you don't want to see my wrinkly old dick. Here it is, but whatever. Just check out my cheeky scarves. And he always has this like scarf on. And you're like, yeah. that's real cheeky. You're like a kind of seem like you're like a cheeky, like you should almost be in like Vegas in like a, a show or something like that, doing magic or something. Right. Like, they're dressed all crazy. <laughs> but anyway, we're getting introduced to the Alpha, which is the name of the sub. And Perry just... Throughout the entire movie, all he's doing is asking questions. Well, they claim also the Alpha Alpha is a submersible, but I disagree. Uh, that's garbage. Yeah. But anyway, we see – out of here. Because they ask, they're like, well, what country is this from? They're like, you have American people, but you have a Japanese pilot. Right. He's like, we're not from any country. You know, We're doing our own thing. It's like, well, somebody had to build it. And then they see – It's kind of like us. Yeah. They see on the wall, this thing was laid down – June 21st, yeah. 1805. 1805 in Scotland. What? Yeah. I mean, it, we, our submarine wasn't built that long ago. Ours was like 1865, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we were close, pretty close. Our independent submarine in mm -hmm. the Great Lakes region. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. So anyways, they, they were there to study this volcano in there because like, oh, we knew it was going to erupt, which is already kind of like a very subtle hint that they are advanced scientifically. Like you can't really know for sure that a submarine or a volcano or an earthquake is going to happen at any given time. But there they go. They zip over here just to watch like a volcano erupt and, and collect data and stuff like that. And anyways, they, they he's collecting data and he's all like, I'm pretty, this is pretty sweet, right guys? And the doctor comes in and is like, not so sweet because my future love interest, this French guy who has like a, a concussion, uh, is going to die if we don't go back to latitude zero. Bum, bum, bum. I love when they call it LZ. LZ, yeah. I yeah. actually started writing it as LZ. <laughs> yeah, no, it's me too. Like, LZ, you got to get to LZ. All right. Oh, is it coming from LZ? Uh, <laughs> so they... They can cruise, man. They tear out of there. They're going over eighty knots. Yeah, it's eighty amazing. knots. Yeah, and yeah. So they, they decide to yeah they decide to un, to to abandon their mission. He's not very happy about it, but the doctor convinces him. Mm -hmm. And so they're heading back to LZ. Bum bum bum. Latitude zero. And then we cut over to our main enemies. Oh, yeah. at Blood Rock. Now I thought this was also an, uh, like a underwater base. It's really just he's on an island. I know. I uh, wish it was underwater. It doesn't make sense either. That island's huge. Like some islands aren't mapped. I'm like, uh, that island would be mapped. <laughs> yeah, it's gigantic. It's pretty big. It's that big building on it. Like, what, you, don't think, you don't think anyone flying around is going to be like, hey, what's that? <laughs> That's a fucking building over there. <laughs> it's got lights on. <laughs> anyway, so Dr. Malik is the, the bad guy, and he has an evil submarine captained by this lady. We'll, uh, just, he's, we'll just refer to her as the little one. The little That's one. That's all he calls her. Uh, it's real gross. And uh, Oh, my little one. My little one. They clearly have some kind of sexual relationship, but he's got this other older lady who's like his very stable sexual relationship. 
And the older lady's like, get rid of this lady and uh, the little one. And he's like, fine, I'll do it right after she kills the fuck out of Mackenzie. And uh, so he sends what well, she's in uh, the Black Shark and that's their submarine. Mm -hmm. like, sends them after Mackenzie. And so they chase after him. And so they, they're on their way to latitude zero, bum, bum, bum. And all of a sudden the black shark's behind them and they start doing all kinds of evasive maneuvers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what you find out is that basically Malik sucks and Mackenzie is like awesome because he's always making better, newer, cooler additions to his submarine yeah. to make it so that it's like impossible for the black shark to ever get them. Yeah. So we see them. What, what, what was the stuff that we saw? Oh, so they can they, go up and down like real fast. Yeah, they had torpedoes shot at them yeah. and then they were able to just like jettison up super quick, get mm -hmm. out of the way. They were even headed straight at a cliff wall so that caused an avalanche and then, oh no, the black shark's going to shoot uh, heat-seeking missiles at us. <laughs> well, guess what? We can like ice ourselves Oh yeah. and totally get away from that and, oh wait, if the black shark's right behind us, we can project a mirror image of ourselves over there, and you're not going to know which one is us. And they even claim they kind of kind of hint that it's not even like a like a projection. Like they actually like produce like a real version of the of the submarine, empty of people. Like I would over believe that it way. because yeah. spoiler, um, the black shark shoots at the wrong one, and it but it does up. actually explode. It does explode. So, so it's got to be a real one. Yeah. So they go a little bit through the back the backstory, and they they've been rivals for since they were in school, and that was. 204 years ago what the fuck yeah because he's like yeah if it weren't for me he would have taken over the whole entire world a century ago yeah like and what it did make did make me think that like the entire world must have been nerd alerts because they were like digging these kind of movies they're like oh man this like 204 year old submarine captain is like going to his utopia land and like fighting monsters and i'm like jesus christ <laughs> 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 I um, only hope that movies that are coming out very soon are very similar to this. Yeah. So anyways, Malik, you know, he kind of, he kind of explains Malik is we, they have their own little war going on. Even though it's the war above the water, they, that's why they kind of have their own world that no one knows about from above. Cause they want to stay out of like the, the wars of the world up there. They also have this stuff they have to battle a little bit as well. And so they end up uh, at latitude zero. Bum, bum, bum. But before this, we, we are also seeing a lot of the crew on the alpha and we're introduced to, Maybe one of my favorite uh, characters in the whole show or movie because <laughs> there's Koho. Koho is amazing. He is. It's so he's, great. He's the hero. Because, <laughs> like, he fucking is the man. At the, we'll get to it at the end, but yeah. he fucking saves people all day long. And it's so funny because everybody just talk, speaks to him in English and then he just has these like lines that are so good. So somebody be like, hey, do this. And he's just like, hey, Gonzo. Gonzo, Gonzo. Right. <laughs> Like and they knew, and they knew what he was saying. <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. did. I love but it. That's that's like all he ever said. Yeah, and it was great. It was it's like the best when they were when they were like gathering their team together at the end. I was like, oh, is Koju not going to be there? And then he's just there. I'm like, well, fucking of course. Like Koju has to be there. He's like the best. Yeah, <laughs> he's like the pilot. He crushes shit. He's the he's he's the hero of the thing. If they didn't have Kojo, they would have all probably died. Yeah, his name is Koho. Awesome. Koho, sorry. Koho. <laughs> don't Anyways. don't you disrespect. I'm him sorry. Like that. I'm sorry. Um, so they take them to, they take them to, uh, latitude zero. Oh, boom, boom, boom. And how deep is it? I don't know. What is it? 11,000 fathoms. And I was like, well, oh, yeah. let's put that in perspective. Oh, it's 12.5 miles. Oh, Jesus. What? <laughs> 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 Talk about being in a volcano. I must've went to the like, center of the earth. Kind of. Yeah. My God. Uh, so anyways, it's basically a, a utopia and the, and the journalist, uh, what's his name? The photographer. Perry. Yeah. They kind of take a little jab at him and his profession kind of being like, we're the realist. You are the ones who kind of like, you know, deal in a world that's all messed up. We mm -hmm. live here and we don't need leaders. We all coexist. We just exist. And they have this huge chunk of the middle of the movie kind of dealing with this idea of there is no leader of latitude zero, bum, bum, bum. Right. Where it's. It's just they they live. And so, like, they keep on kind of pointing to things. The I think the best point they made is at one point they're shown to their rooms and, or their room they share. And uh, not great utopia, am I right? Like, sharing a room? Get yeah, out of here. come on. I want a suite. And so they're like, okay, and you just press these buttons for food. And the guy has a good point. He's like, well, how do you have someone who cooks the 
food if you're just not there's no money or anything you're just kind of like living your life why would anyone do that work then if, right. rather than like, oh well we just like rotate and everyone does it because like, they it's like a it. hobby yeah and like oh tonight's the mineral mineralogist i'm like that would turn out to be like the worst food that would be just the worst <laughs> shit. instead of it's like a gourmet meal i'm like i don't understand so the mineral mineral mineralogist is like a world-class chef as well of course, there's a utopia. Else going on. I mean, I guess it, that's the thing with a utopia. I think they must have, they could say, okay, we can build a utopia. It's like, well, you all have like super genius, talented people. Maybe that's how you have a utopia. <laughs> right. It'd be like being in an apartment with six of the most talented people in the world and being like, a apartment's pretty much a utopia. It's like, yeah, you're all ridiculously talented. Yeah. I know. I was waiting to see um, like the trailer park section. Like we could see the trailer park boys all of a sudden pop out and they're living down here. You're like, how did you guys get here? <laughs> well, you did, you did see. <laughs> <laughs> you did see kind of the people doing bullshit. Like there was like a woman just like trampolining. Oh place. my gosh, dude! Yes, yeah, so they're showing. Forever. They're showing the LZ, and they are. Gotta you know, get that LZ going. Yeah, they're talking about it, but in the background, you can see a woman on a trampoline the whole time, and then they even zoom in on her. Mm-hmm. She's doing flips and stuff. Yeah, so because they're job? asking about the gold clothing because everybody's wearing gold clothes, and they're they like, don't have to clean it. Oh yeah, well of course we're gonna <laughs> wear gold. Duh. If you get it from the seawater, it's easy to extract. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, and then they're, they're also sitting in their apartment and they're like, do you know, remember that movie Phantom where everyone turned out to actually be dead and not actually alive? Do you think that's happening to us? And they, they were like, I do love Phantom, but I don't think so. I'm kind of buying this. And the uh, photographer is like, I don't know. I think we're, I think we might be dead because we're surrounded by people who have been claimed to be missing on earth and presumed dead. So we're seeing all kinds of, like, everyone's dead. And right. now we're here, so we must be dead. Yeah, because they were introducing people earlier who said, oh, that's so-and-so scientist. They did, they oh, did a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Wait a minute. Didn't he go missing over two years ago yeah. or something like that? And they were just, they've been bringing him down here and they've been working on these special projects. Yeah. So anyways, the bad guy, what, what the, the plan now for the bad guy is, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to steal this new scientist that's going down to the LZ. And uh, when I steal them, we'll steal him. Mackenzie's going to come and try to rescue him. So I, I can lure the alpha out of there and I can finally destroy the alpha, mm-hmm. which is funny because like, I mean, yes, if Mackenzie died, it'd be like a loss for the LZ, but like, it's not like he's going to gain anything. He still can't get into the LZ. I guess the idea would be maybe he would then jump in the alpha, but then if he's destroyed it, I don't know. It's all right. very strange. You'd have to capture the alpha, but the, the plan doesn't really make all that much sense. No, but it doesn't it just, need to. He just, I guess he, he just really hates Mackenzie. He wants to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, this guy is going to capture Dr. Okada. Yeah. He has a, what would you call it? No. Serum oh. <laughs> that will um, essentially make people- Immune to radiation. Immune to radiation. Yeah. And- Everybody on the surface on the normal planet wants it because- What do you mean by normal planet? Okay. Sorry, the planet we live on. Okay. Uh, they want it, but then he said, well, I can't give this to you because then that pers- that nation would have an unfair advantage and they would nuke everybody. Right. And they would just rule. Because you know, if you have took the serum, you can just survive a nuclear blast. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But um, I think it's more the fallout. Mm-hmm. But anyways- so he wants to get it into latitude zero so it can be distributed worldwide. Right. But Okada isn't going to make it to LZ right no. away. Right. Because he's on his way to, to Honolulu or whatever. And he get, and the black shark shows up and takes him. Mm-hmm. And so they're kind of at – at the same time this is happening, they're kind of getting a little tutorial on how the whole place works. And again, the photographer is kind of like, but if you have all this shit that's like a thousand times better than anything on Earth and you claim that all this is done for the benefit of Earth, why doesn't Earth have any of this stuff? And he's like, well, we do sneak – discoveries in everyone's mind they had a really hilarious scene where someone just walks into a lab and puts like a piece of paper into a lab notebook and is like see we gave him to discovery i'm like that is the crazy <laughs> that would not work what yeah <laughs> it'd be like and now they know it. it's like no wait what and anyways like that's th- like a small piece of paper that's one like compound right you literally healed someone on the verge of death in a matter of hours and they have no marks on them yeah. So, and he said he even woke up. He just he's like, "Oh yeah, I feel totally fine." Yeah. And so, anyways, they realize that uh, was it Otaka? Is that his name? Okada. Okada. And they realize Okada has been stolen, and they, they so they get the team together, and they're like, "Who's going to come with me?" And it's they all decide to go. Plus, um, Koho. Hey, Gonzo. And and Doctor Barton says, Kadu. "I've got a gum. Come, not yeah. gum. Yeah. 
Not gum. Stiggle. Yeah. Piggle. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I know Zach would love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, uh, yeah, she's like, basically, I want to, you know, make sure that uh, the uh, the guy I have the hots for and his sweet dick is okay. And I got to, like, keep an eye on him. Right. Yeah. And that's then, what she says. I think that's actually her exact phrasing. But before they go, they all need to take a bath. Okay. And I do want to just go in here and say what the scene was supposed to be because it was right after the code was lifted and you could start to do nudity in movies. Okay. And it was supposed to be a full nude scene for the woman, the actress. Okay. And it was supposed to be them in the bath and she's totally nude and she walks into the bath. And that wasn't allowed in Japan. And the Japanese director was like, no, and would not relent. Even though they kept on saying, no, 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 we want to release this with nudity. We want to release it. It'll be a bigger hit in America if we have nudity in it. And he was like, no. And he refused. And so we got the scene that we ended up getting, which is more of like a silhouette right. of her as she gets And it's just kind of like the shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So we could have seen full frontal probably and pr- probably, probably full pen- penetration in the end, but we didn't. Good Lord. Alas. Anyways, they she gets into the bath and they're all like got boners. It's like sticking out of the water pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, or at least they're, they, you know, figuratively, metaphorically, they're sticking out of the water. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, you're all ready. Get out of the bath. And they're all like, you first, because we have these boners over here. And <clears throat> she's like, no, you first. And he's like, oh, damn it. So they have to get out. <laughs> yeah. And they get out and they, they're like, we have to test him. And so they're like shooting them with guns. And because they apparently they're now indestructible. Yeah. All right. So this was called the bath of immunity. Yeah. It should have been called the bath of invincibility. Right. Yeah. The immunity, I thought they were just like. Immune to try, Trying to keep them from spreading diseases. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it was. But anyway. Um, no, we don't want you getting sexually transmitted diseases yeah. with all these naked ladies around. Like, yeah. Let's tell you. It's, bath it's, of immunity. Free, it's free love down here. <laughs> like, yeah. get, go to town. So anyway, they uh, they shoot they shoot everybody and they're kind of catching the bullets. And Doctor Tashiro takes one of the chests and he says, uh, uh, "I've been hit harder with ping pong balls." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. I actually laughed at that. I I really enjoyed it too. <laughs> and so they're they're getting on their way and we we jump back to the to the Black Rock or whatever. What was it called? Red Rock. Red Blood Rock. Blood Rock. Come Red on. Rock, Black Rock. Whatever. It's all the same. And uh, the, the, ca- the, the Japanese, uh, the uh, submarine captain, the uh, little one, is there. And she's like, I totally want you now. And he's Malik's like, oh, we will bone. Don't you worry about it. But just come with me real quick and get in this room. And she's like, okay, and I'll wait for you here. And so he's got the scientists and stuff. And they're, they've been trying to interrogate him, but he's not going to relent. And so he puts him in the room and then she gets into a cage. She's like captured. And they're like, wait, what the fuck? She's like screaming. Is there something so, wrong? And he's like, nothing's wrong. Oh, boy. This was a cage like in the classic game Mousetrap. Yeah, just Where something just yeah. drops down on you. They didn't really Like need a basket either. style thing. I mean, she's already locked in the room. I know. <laughs> just needs to be but a smaller room. A room within the room. Make sure she can't get away. If she gets out of the cage, she's still in that little room. Yeah. Uh, and so then they get in there and this is where the movie starts to go off the chain because yeah. they're like, oh, you won't tell us your secrets to this radiation stuff. Well, guess what? Boop. And they open this thing and there's just like bat monsters. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's crazy bat monsters. They're like, wow, wow. <laughs> they're going nuts. And yeah. it's so funny because he's like, I am a genius. I made these things. Yeah. I, I was like, made this. It. And it, this was kind of weird. I'm like, if you're so smart. Why can't you just make this serum yourself? Because he he's literally the, – the way he's smart, he's smart in one way. He's like an idiot savant, I think, which is like he can transplant brains into other bodies. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's the one thing he can do. He's like Mozart or whatever, right? But he, even, even um, Okada said, well, I'm never going to tell you. He's like, well, then I'll just cut out your brain and download the information. And he's like, you can't do it. He's like, well, yes, I can. Yeah, he loves – yeah, he's like a master of brains. Why do this then? Just a master of brains. <laughs> brain stuff. Yeah, just brain stuff. He doesn't know the other shit. Just this brain stuff because then – Oh man! I mean, but no, no, he, he does a little more than brains. Yeah, we'll see. Right? Because <laughs> I wondered what he was doing with that condor. Right. I was like, oh, she doesn't have two brains. And so <laughs> then they they decide they take the the scientist and his daughter into this room, and they're like, oh boy, you better get ready for some crazy shit because I'm going to be here's like the little one. She's strapped to this gurney, and guess what? I'm combining her with boop crazy fake lion and <laughs> boop crazy fake vulture guess what we're getting we're getting a flying lion yeah flying lion a griffin griffin yeah a griffin <laughs> i could call it a griffin later i'm like yeah. i guess that's technically true <laughs> yeah. but also uh okada's daughter the whole time is just like screaming and fainting 
Yeah. Anybody else notice that? Yeah, I thought it was really funny the first time she fainted. Yeah. <laughs> and so he says the 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 Malik has a greatest line, one of the greatest lines here, where it's just like he literally says, and I'm pretty sure this is a direct quote. I'm now going to transplant a human brain into the head of this lion. Uh, yes, please. Twelve inches. <laughs> I've just, I've got twelve inches multiple places for this movie and elsewhere. Yeah, you better believe it because that is amazing, and I can't wait to see this brain go into that lion body. It's oh, man. crazy. Oh, and they start cutting away, man, and he he freaking does it. He does it, and so the the team gets close, and they they, they start moving their way towards like the thing because they they fly up. The, basically, this this castle area is impossible to get to with the submarine. So uh, Mackenzie's like, okay, you put the put the submarine on the bottom of the uh, ocean floor. And we're going to fly up with these little jetpacks and then we'll get up there and we'll get everyone out and we'll come back and you'll raise it when I, when I radio you. But he's like, Hey, go. also look at all these wicked sweet power gloves we have. Right. Cause we can shoot flames. We can shoot lasers. We can shoot bombs, anything we want from our fingertips. Right. And you're like, oh, 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 boy, I can't wait to see that. And so this was kind of funny cause I, I did notice Perry asking so many questions. Oh yeah. And, um, he, he looks at Mackenzie and he says, say, captain, you ever been here before? First time. Oh, that's great. How do we find Dr. O'Connor? We'll have to search. <laughs> She's like, duh! Like, what are you thinking? Oh, we're actually, we're doing well. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> my favorite thing is that, so they're starting their way up there and they're, they're doing little things to try to prevent it. Mostly Lucretia, the, old, the older lady that Malik's involved with, is kind of doing stuff. He's busy totally messing with these animals and human beings and stuff like that messing with the brains because yeah. even even like they're not even going to get close don't you worry about it. i'm busy okay as yeah. he's like operating on this lion and i'm like this is hilarious he's like so focused on his like weird lion brain experiment he doesn't even care that mckenzie's actually like penetrating his fortress right <laughs> so anyway yeah. he, he gets the brain in the lion he finishes and, then, it, yeah. and then he like pulls the condor out of the cage and we're like well what's he gonna do now he just cuts the wings yeah, off it, it's so great glues it to the lion pretty much st just stitches it right on there <laughs> and and away we go. We've got a griffin. Yeah, we have the griffin and it's pretty much complete. And so they're like pressing things. And so there's like rocks that fall and Coho is saving everyone. Like Coho saves someone from like the falling rocks and pulls people different ways. He's always the back. Like people will run a different direction and he'll be like, quick, quick, quick. And they'll get past him. And then he'll like come up the back. I'm like, that is fucking leader. He's a leader. He should yes. be the captain of the submarine. Hey, Gonzo. They even uh, they find these giant rats. Well, so then yeah, because then he talks oh, I love about the rats. With a, with a flying <laughs> lion, he says, "Don't even worry about this. Lion's not even that big. I can make it like three times bigger with this like other potion thing that I have." Malik, yeah, not Malik, yeah, yeah, Malik, yeah, sorry. And uh, and so like, and then we see the product of that around the caves where they go into this cave and there are these giant rats and they're making terrible noises. And it's like, oh, so, so just like over and over again. And they're like, Oh, we should do battle with these rats, but they keep on, they're having a little trouble. There's just a lot of them. So they're like shooting them with bullets and they're like not really getting all, all that hurt. Then they run away a little bit and they're shooting them with fire and they do burn one. <laughs> they kill one by burning it. Yeah. That's about it. They only get one of them. And at the same time, Coho, they're like, Oh, what about this like weird acid river? Like, can we get across it? And Coho's like, Oh, let me check real quick. And he sticks his foot in there and it gets all like crazy burned and he also his suit gets burned yeah his suit gets burned because oh, I, I, yeah i was like you you went in the bath of immunity thank god man. right yeah. yeah yeah you can't be getting hurt right and so but your suit can melt and he can drop his his uh rocket pack into the acid as well so he lost yeah. his rocket rocket pack and he lost one of his boots and they're like are you good to go and co is like yeah i'm fucking coho ever heard of it i'm getting my own spin-off series but he did not say that no he didn't he was say just that. like da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Oh, that was, I'm sorry. That was, now I feel bad about that. <laughs> and so uh, they were like, oh, you know what? I forgot we have these jetpacks. So they're going to jetpack away. And so they jetpack away from the rats. And all the rats are like, we better get after them and fall into the acid. I was like, oh, that kind of, that worked out pretty easily. Yeah. And they have this lion flying around. And this is my favorite part too. Is like, the lion just doesn't do shit. The lion goes up and like sits on like a rock. And Malik's like, what the fuck? Like, little one, why? Is she, she was terrible as like a human. Is she also terrible as a griffin? Like, what the fuck? He, she's got to do something without realizing, like, he totally betrayed her. So her brain yeah. is like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's what I was thinking, too. I'm like, you literally, she wanted to, you know, make babies with you. And you were like, I'm going to lock you in this cage. By the way, I'm also going to cut open your head. Yeah. Take your brain out. Stick it in this beast. Glue some wings to it. Now... I love you. Yeah. And we so, are so close to done here. So they finally get into the, their big battle with Lucretia and Malik. And there's all the bats flying around. And they kill all the bats, kill a whole bunch of bats. And then Lucretia gets kind of like pushed into Malik. And he backs and stabs her to death. 
which is a little strange. Yeah. Apparently, in the original script, it was supposed to be that he uses her as a human shield, the the captain, Mackenzie. And, like, they were like, uh, American audience is not going to go for that. Like, it's got to be an ac- accident from him trying to defend himself. Oh, Mackenzie still kind of pushed her. I know. I actually was like, it still seemed really strange yeah. <laughs> to me. I was like, oh. That's fine. Uh, yeah, she did kind of suck. And so they they all escape after this. Like Malik escapes. They're like, oh shit. Well, we got who we came for. We came for these scientists. But anyways, so they're fighting these six foot tall bat oh, yeah, monsters sure. at this time. Oh yeah. And they make like pretty light work of them. And then like a bunch of tiny bats come around and they're everybody's like, ah, the bats, you know. Yeah. But they're they're so small. And then that's when Malik escapes. That's when Malik It makes no yeah. sense. Yeah. They're oh, like then, so focused on these tiny bats. And then Lucretia's corpse just like dissolves. Yes. Was that for a particular reason? No idea. Hmm. Anyways. Uh, and so they go, they go up onto the cliff and they're like, okay, time to get out of here. And so they, they fly down and the doctor's like, oh boy, I really missed you French person that never talks and I haven't really known and uh, we're definitely going to smooch. And they smooch. And then they get back onto the uh, submarine and then like, oh shit, <laughs> the black shark is here. And Malik's in the black shark is like, we're going to totally fuck up the alpha right now. And he yeah. had previously mentioned how like, I hope w- whatever new addition he had, they made at LZ, bum, 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 like that they won't, uh, that it won't be like super hard for us to kill it now. And then of course, course it finds out they have like a, they turn on a magnet and they're going to shoot it and then it turns out the alpha now can fly and it's basically like also a plane and all right a <laughs> so yeah they turn on a magnetic field yeah. the black shark does and it's pushing the alpha away mm-hmm. but you also know it's a magnetic field because coho is sitting there and all of a sudden this gold bracelet oh yeah shoots off his arm gold is not magnetic it's true but i was like if the bracelet is magnetic, why isn't why aren't everybody's clothes just being ripped off? Because they're all made of gold. Probably in the original script, it was. <laughs> yeah. It's like Gosh. we need nudity now. We want to see dicks. We want to see breasts. Stat. But they couldn't. They couldn't because of Japanese like Gosh. film code. Well, I anyway, he, I thought he said their clothing was a mix of gold and titanium. So it should have oh, flown off. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know. All right. <laughs> All right. So with the magnetic field, Mackenzie's able to be like, oh, if we use this style of thruster, we will essentially fly. People are like, really? And, like, and it totally works. And they do. And so he's and, and still Malik though, he's like shooting out this flying alpha and like, boo, boo, oh, I'm gonna definitely kill him. And then all of a sudden the lion comes and totally fucks him up. <laughs> yeah. <great. laughs> the lion jumps on top of the black shark, just starts screwing with stuff, and eventually the laser hits the side of blood rock and causes an avalanche and it just a landslide, to be more accurate. There's not, yeah, it's sorry. not snow. You're right. And uh, <laughs> all these rocks fall on the black shark, it explodes in fabulous fashion. Oh yeah. And all of Blood Rock blows up too. Yeah, I don't know thing. what happened there. I have no idea. But it, it all like, went. It's like the Death Star, I think. I think that laser went straight down some like uh, whatever garbage chute or whatever it was. Yeah. And so exhaust exhaust port or whatever. And so um, they uh, they get away. They fly away, and everyone's like, "Oh, we're definitely staying because we found these like sweet hot ladies to bone all day in a utopia." Ever heard of it? Like, and so the French guy is like, "I'm totally boning this doctor for the rest of my life." And the Japanese ca- ca- commander, submarine captain or bathosphere captain, is like, uh, you "Remember that daughter of the noble." prize winning scientist uh now i'm boning her so get out of here and the photographer's like well i don't have anyone to bone so i'm just gonna take these diamonds and leave but it was also weird here the entire time perry the photographer you he kept asking about dr barton yes and you're like oh man They're somehow gonna somehow those two are gonna hook up no not a chance not even not even like remotely close. You would think that maybe one of the things they would have is have her want to get up back up to the surface. You know what? I'm going to forsake my utopia for the sake of love and make it up. And then they would have something like that. But no, they just, everyone stays in the utopia except for him. And he, he leaves and they have a little explanation. But he gets a bunch of diamonds. Yeah. And they get, a, they give an explanation that's very similar to 20,000 leagues in the sea. Like, why don't you come up and kind of let everyone know that you exist and you have all these advancements. And he's like, you know, when the human race is ready, and not such like warmongering, terrible people, then maybe we'll come up and help them. But right now it just, it's gotta be how it is. Just little things here and there and we'll help them. And we'll just keep making these advancements in the utopia. And he's like, okay. So then he heads up and they have this really bizarre end of the movie where he's like, oh, and we, you know, totally, it was totally like a utopia. Why aren't you believing me? And then like a whole bunch of the characters show up, including Malik. Malik and Mackenzie Malik are and both McKenzie are leaders both like, of this uh, U.S. Navy ship. Yeah, and then the Japanese commander is also there, or the bathosphere uh, captain is there, and then um, 
I think that was it. Oh, and, he, and then his diamonds disappear. They're actually in like they're actually it's actually just like pipe tobacco again in his like little pack mm -hmm. pocket thing he has. And then, but it ends with them being like, oh, we're getting these messages saying that all like these diamonds have been put into a bank account for the photographer. How do they even know they, it was here? And it's so weird. Like everyone is doubles then. It's like, such a bizarre, weird ending. It's like, yes. it is real, but it's not, but it is, but it's not. But wait, is it though? But it is, but it's also not. It's a good end. question. And no, not the end yet, because they're like, oh, by the way, there was a spacecraft that crashed in the ocean, oh, yeah. which this part, I was like, what, what is going on with this? Uh, and then they're like, well, where's it at? It's at latitude zero. Bum, bum, bum. And I thought Mackenzie was going to smirk at the end. So it'd be like, oh, it's, we know it's him. It's actually Mackenzie. Oh, but it's not. But then Mackenzie, McKen then Malik would have to be like a good guy all of a sudden. It's such a weird ending. Anyways. That's the end of that. That's, sorry. We went over. We went lengthy. We went way over. And it probably is just like crazy. We were so excited. I think it was. So try to follow that, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zach's like what the hell Hi right, Zach What'd you think about this You know uh, I was kind of excited for it Because I like the Toho company a lot Because I grew up watching those old Godzilla movies And Every single one of those old Godzilla movies Always they played out just like this movie There's like three fourths of the movie is slow <laughs> Uneventful really I mean it's like hey I, there's people And then all of a sudden in the last 20 minutes There's actually a lot of action with like the Godzilla fights. And that's pretty much what this was. There was like a lot of the action at the end with the bat people and the, the, the um, the lion eagle and the rocks and the lasers and the fire. And the <laughs> so, yeah, it got, yeah, it got weird and I expected it to be weird and I liked it. And it was enjoyable. I like people in body suits like that. I think it's funny. Like those bat, like the guy in the bat, like when he was just standing there in that bat suit, he's just behind those people and they were talking. He had to have been. <laughs> Like, what was going on in that guy's head? <laughs> just because you could see his eyes. <laughs> I was just looking right into his eyes. Yeah, it was just man. <laughs> but so I liked score? it. Um, yeah, zero. Oh wow, latitude zero. <laughs> just kidding. Um, five, five, okay. five. You can, see, yeah. you can hear the disappointment in Kyle's. I mean, voice. I'm never going to watch this again. So five. It's, it's sure. All right, Mustard Man, what you got? Uh, I'm going to give this movie a 6.2. It was okay. Like, I guess I could just say 6. Anyways. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> For clarification purposes, is it a 6 or 6.2? 6. Let's six. We'll just say 6. Are you sure it's not a 6.269? I'm trying to think, like, I don't know what's going to what's gonna bump it up to that point, too, now that I'm thinking about it. I don't think there's anything I can. Um, I guess it was inadvertently funny in some stuff. So I think I found myself laughing at this more than I should have. And I think we already mentioned it before, but that ping pong's comment that the guy made, like that actually made me laugh for whatever reason. Uh, the giant rats that they ended up catching on fire uh, when they were running away. I thought that was hilarious too. Oh, Even the rats, to the be rats scary. were great. Yeah. Just three giant rats. Um, and then we got <laughs> to see cute. a pretty cool futuristic submarine that could fly or not futuristic. I don't know. Whatever you want yeah, to call it. Yeah. It's actually, it. it's, it's kind of rare for us to see a futuristic submarine in the end. I mean, we'll see a lot more in the Japanese, uh, cycle that we have going, but yeah. Um, and you know, I mean, it kind of sticks with movie themes like around the same time, you know, when they were making movies at this time, they were always talking about doomsday devices and saving the world or futuristic stuff. So, I mean, it was right in line with that. It was, it was decent. I might well, watch a lot, a lot it again. About, a lot about hydrogen bombs and stuff too. So the rate, whole radiation subplot. Yeah. Yep. I might watch it again, unlike Zach. So I'll give it okay. a six. So I actually, I'm going to do my next. I know Kyle's probably going to come in the top of this guy. And I actually, despite having a lot of fun, kind of making fun of it and, and making some, you know, uh, there's some just hilarious quotes involving mm -hmm. mostly the lion surgery that he's performing. <laughs> like, yeah. He seems like he really has a passion for it, of creating these like monster animals and then making them big. And like, it seems like he really could just have a, a grand old time, Alec, of just creating these monsters all day. Yes. But he also has to try to like take over a lot of two zero so he, can <laughs> he has to have utopia. some kind of has other mission else. but he seems to have a lot of, a lot of joy out of that and some hilarious quotes and some really weird stuff that happens but i agree it's it's pretty slow for lar large portions of it mostly kind of arguing the idea of what like a utopia is and whether it can exist and how it compares to the 
to the upper world. It's it's similar in some ways to like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in that way. Like a lot of discussion happens in terms of like the good and the bad of the world and like whether what they're doing is good and bad. Um, and so I don't know. I think I'm going to end up somewhere in between Zach and Alex, maybe 5, 5. 5.5. 5. That, that would be between I, 5 and 6. Yeah, somewhere between because <laughs> it could be anywhere between, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, and so, um, I'm not like, I'm not like Alex where I'm going to go like 5.632 <laughs> and then have to Repeating. do some reference. So I'll be like, hmm, weird. <laughs> um, Repeating. But yeah, no, I, I, it's not, it's not like a super exciting film. And I think that's probably somewhat similar to the Toho films. I don't, I don't know them very well. Um, so someone else would have to comment on that where you kind of get, there is like this, a little bit of a mire of a plot that you have to get through that, that they're trying to explain. That's exactly that, what the Godzilla movies are. Yeah. That kind of goes around the really fun, like set pieces and big monsters that you really yep. are there to see. <laughs> yeah. And this, it's the same, it's the same here where it's like, if it didn't have that really funny stuff, sprinkled throughout it'd be a terrible movie like a really bad movie but it does so it kind of boosts its way up almost to the to that actually you know what i'm gonna give it a six it's like halfway <laughs> between. Six. yeah it's got that sprinkled. you're talking yourself into it i'm talking myself into kind of halfway between good and bad because it's it's got it's got the good stuff sprinkled into what is not very good Okay. All right. I'm going to start off mine by saying all you guys are wrong. Okay. <laughs> this is like exactly Mr. Yeah. This is your Mr. Lewis. Yeah. This movie was great, guys. <laughs> like, I don't see how there it was, was a, slow. There was a cartoon fish. Wait, which movie are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't slow. Like, we got into the action immediately. All of a sudden, the Alpha and the Black Shark are doing battle. It's great. Like, we're using miniatures and it looks really good. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. really it looks good? good. Okay, when you have those miniature people doing their like rocket pack, all right, that thing. stuff, whatever. Do you, that do, was do you fun. like it when the giant bats have strings that you could see coming yeah. off of them? Oh, dude, it just adds to it. Did you like the bathosphere little toy that was getting yeah, blown away by that, the eruption? That thing could have been better. Could have been better. But okay. everything else, it was great. I thought Maybe. we got plenty of action. Yeah, I love the people like when he opened the door and got that guy in the lion suit. Oh, that was great. <laughs> he was just looking at it you're like, what? Yeah. And you're like, well, really I guess weird. we need to use this lion more. So, yeah, we're going to cut into its brain and all that stuff. But sub action was good. Coho was clutch. Yes. Um, love Coho. Everybody's outfits were fantastic. Do you want to start writing the Coho spinoff? Dude, I, I wanted more from this movie i wanted lord of the rings-esque style trilogy to this movie like you want to have it where the cut scenes when they do like a director's oh, cut and it's like six hours long and you're like yeah. yes please because imagine imagine the journey or latitude zero the assault on blood rock latitude, been, zero. Oh. <laughs> Lat latitude zero origins that's 204 yeah. years ago that's 1800s oh, oh shit. yeah that would have been awesome yeah. see now you guys are buying into it coho latitude it zero coho's great. adventures this movie for me, 8.0. Wow. Lat okay. Latitude wow. Zero, Latitude Zero, Coho Saves the President, where he actually saves Abraham Lincoln from being, getting assassinated. That would be amazing. Done. We just wrote it. Mm -hmm. All rights reserved. Yeah. That's how you do it. All rights reserved. No Boom. one can steal it now. I don't know. You guys, with your low scores, I guess they're like average. <laughs> Yeah, they're actually not that low. It actually probably will end up being one of the higher rated films we watch. <laughs> we watch mostly shit. So, yeah. All right. So, I'm going to go into a little trivia for this guy. So, this is an American production, especially to start. Like, it really started as an American production. Um, uh, but Don Sharp, who was a producer, uh, he kind of got roped Toho into it um, because they knew that Toho was trying to get more international. They kind of had some. They had made a lot of Godzilla films at that point, but it was starting to fade and it, it was leading into what ended up being a long hiatus in Godzilla films in the early uh, seven, uh, 1970s, or uh, 1700s as well. It was a really long hiatus in Godzilla films all the way up until the first Godzilla film. Hmm. Um, but so it, it was leading into that. It was like kind of going down downwards a little bit in popularity. So they wanted to start doing some international stuff because they knew that international audiences did like what they were, what they were producing or whatever. And so in the end, though, Toho had to bankroll almost everything because the uh, American production company uh, was nearly in bankruptcy by the end of it. But hmm. American company uh, did pay for the actors, which were much higher paid than um, what would be typically in a Japanese production. 
And so uh, in the weird thing is, okay, so if you watch the movie at the end, it says producer, Don Sharp, right? Okay. S-H-A-R-P, no E. But in all of the in all of the trivia and stuff like that, uh, it is Don Sharp S H A R P E. So Don Sharp without an E on on the end credits, and then with an E everywhere else. And uh, the end credits of this film are wrong. It actually is the S H A R P E. Really? But somehow it's wrong in the credits of the film. Like when you watch. Was there the some kind of, of bad blood between the guys? I don't know. I Where think they just, just say, "Hey, leave the E off." Yeah, I know. You normally you'd think IMDb got it wrong, but no, the movie was actually wrong in how to spell this guy's name. Weird. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, the screenplay is credited to Ted uh, Shardiman, who wrote the series as a radio play back in like the forties, and they actually had a number of Seriously? episodes. Yeah, on on NBC Radio in the forties. Can we and find then, that? We probably could, and then he'd uh, probably be just available for free because they don't actually have like <laughs> <laughs> the copyright anymore. But uh, he, this was his, this was his last film credit. He also tried to sell this as a TV show in like the fifties, but it didn't. It didn't take. Oh my gosh, so, that would have been the best. Well, TV show now. Yeah, yeah. Now we need to make a TV show. Yes. Um, mostly about Coho and the Flying Lion. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and so he was notable. He was most notable as uh, the screenwriter of the film Them! Exclamation point, which is about giant ants. So it's them? A, it's kind of, them. Them. Oh. So the actress who played Lucretia, Patricia Medina, was actually married to Joseph Cotton, who played Captain McKenzie, uh, at the time of filming. Weird. Yeah. Uh, this was one of the last films of special effects master uh, Eiji uh, Subur Subur Suburaya, who did the special effects for almost all of the Godzilla films um, until the until the next phase of Godzilla films started in the 80s and stuff. Hmm. So all the way up until like the early 70s, he did most of the special effects for the Godzilla films. And so he, he's got a very distinct style. This kind of fits in that style of those Godzilla It films. does. And then the photographer in this film was played by Hollywood supporting actor Richard Jekyll. He was nominated for an Oscar for Sometimes a Great Notion just two years after Latitude Zero. So he's in this two years later, nominated for an Oscar. Hmm. It's also not uh, Sometimes a Great uh, Notion was the second book, or one of the books by the guy who wrote One Flew Over the Cuckoo Cuckoo's Nest, which like swept the Oscars. So it was a very like, um, it was a very uh, anticipated film. Um, anyways, so he's been part of uh, some major motion pictures as like mostly as like third or fourth credit. So let's see if any of his co-stars would have been done well in Latitude Zero. Ooh. What about Jeff Bridges, who was in Starman with Richard Jekyll? Jeff Bridges would have been good. He would have been. He would have been a good older Jeff Bridges. Would have been a good Mackenzie. He would have been. Yeah, because he's kind of like a no nonsense, but like. Yeah, but he's got that. A lot of his movies, you know, he's using that kind of accent. He's got that twang. I'd like him. I just like Jeff Bridges in general. He'd be. He's good like in him it. in general. Yeah. Anything, literally all of the roles. And he's not it. He could probably do it. What about Ernest Borgnine? Who was in the Dirty Dozen with him? I'm actually surprised he wasn't in this movie, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> he wasn't asked. If he was asked, he would have been in it. I know. <laughs> I started thinking, certainly. like, at first, that he's got to be, like, one of those rat costumes or something. But I looked into it. And it's not. Um, <laughs> not I him. honestly really thought this was something he was going to be in. So, yes, I could see him in it. But I think he would have been what? the photographer, right? I don't Dude, know. I would have liked him as a Malik. Character. Well, it's like a bad guy. I feel like he's got to be one of the side good guys. So, he'd be almost like... Uh, He'd be like the French guy, but then he, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Tough one. Hmm. What about Tommy Lee Jones, who was in Black Moon Rising with him? That could be Malik, or it could yeah. be Mackenzie. Older. Either one. I could see him being Mackenzie. Uh, do you think so? Yeah. What about Chuck Norris, who was in <laughs> Delta Force 2, The Columbian Connection with him? All right. Yeah. <laughs> so Chuck Norris, yes. I would like him as Malik yeah. and there to be a wicked standoff where he's just, sure. you know, roundhouses, uppercuts. Ooh. He roundhouse kicks the lion's head off and like that's how he gets the brain in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he just, or he just reaches in its mouth and grabs up and grabs the brain. That makes sense. That'd it's be like cool. Science. Fuck that. I'm just, Chuck Norris. Ever heard of this? He just flexes and it's a science as a tattoo on his like bicep. <laughs> like, oh, that's true. <laughs> he's got you there. Uh, he could also have been the. He could have been um, Matt, McKenzie. He could also have been just Coho. The, Coho. Oh my God! Yes, 
Yeah. Chuck Norris is coho with like minimal speaking lines for yeah. sure, but just out there flexing on stuff. Yeah. What about David Hasselhoff of Baywatch? Oh my gosh, because he was so in Baywatch. He was in a bunch of Baywatch from episodes. This guy, Richard Who? Jekyll. Richard Jekyll. Really? Yeah. Oh. So you could you could imagine David Hasselhoff being coho. You could imagine him being the captain. You could imagine him being Malik, probably. Um, but David Hasselhoff has you know that kind of like good guy personality. Yeah. So I'd want him as Mackenzie. But then where does Jeff Bridges go? So maybe maybe David Hasselhoff would be like the Japanese bathosphere captain, but not Japanese, obviously, because David Hasselhoff. No, I would like that. Yellow face. I would like that if he was the Japanese guy. Uh, maybe it's back like, then. It's like a it Tropic have, Thunder might, situation. It might have flown back then, but yeah. probably not now. Uh, and then finally, Ed Harris, who starred in uh, with uh, Richard Jekyll in his dreams. Oh, so. okay. Um. Every role. You think every role in this case. Wow. Yeah. I say, I, I think Coho would have been good because mm-hmm. it really would have been like, uh, they would be like, oh, get in this immunity bath. And he would have been like, uh, this is my immunity bath. And then he would have broken open this big bottle of grease and just <laughs> been like, boom. How about that? And they'd be like, well, but now we can shoot you. And they'd shoot him and the <laughs> bullet would just like slide off him. Yeah. He'd be like, there we go. <laughs> Daddy here. And he was just <laughs> rippling muscles. Just like like pure, like zero zero percent body fat. And he jumps in the uh, acid bath and it's just, he's so slick that it all just goes around him and yeah. he can move freely through it. Yeah. Like, he's like, just come along. And they're like, well, we didn't bring the grease with us. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> We're just going to fly over there. Are you, yeah. uh, are you working on marketing that? Some kind of product at Harris Grease? Me? Yeah. Oh, well. What would it be? Like a, would it be like a tanning lotion or something? <laughs> It'd be a gen- general, I guess it'd be like a <laughs> general grease, <laughs> general grease, mostly to, mostly for body, like uh, weightlifters, I guess, but. You want to grease up and look like Ed Harris? Yeah. Get Ed Harris grease. General grease. <laughs> 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 All right. So I got a phantom zone. Um, engage the phantom. Phantom's engaged, sir. So this is, it's kind of a. It's kind of a long one. Uh, so the easiest way to do this was Akira Takarada, who's famous for a lar- larger number of the Godzilla films. And so he got a cameo and they got new Godzilla. And so like that's the easiest way because that was actually in my cycle a long time for The Abyss. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not going to do that. It's too easy. So I'm going to go through Joseph Cotton. Um, you know, the guy, he was in... Uh, uh, he was in Citizen Kane and all that, but he's also in a TV movie called The Assault on the Wayne. From there, I could take a quick hop over to Ice Station Zebra through Lloyd Haynes, and we've already done that one. But mm-hmm. you know, I still feel, I was feeling myself. I was like, you know, that's too easy too. So instead, I used Leonard Nimoy of Star Trek fame to jump over to Atlantis, The Lost Empire, the animated film. Ooh. And from there, you know, I kind of saw that, so I had to go back to something I'd used before. James Gardner, he was in Up Periscope. Now, I do want to apologize to listeners because I've used Up Periscope before, but I claimed that there were two movies of that name, a comedy and an action. I was wrong. Just an action film with with Gardner. The one that I was thinking You're of was going under starring Bill Pullman. So I, I'm just sorry to everyone who, like, trusted me as the brain. I failed you, and I will, I promise at some point to commit seppuku as a result of this. It's just like for my shame. Is that where you it. stick the sword in yourself? Yes. Is that how it's pronounced? I don't, I don't know. Think how, I don't think Seppuku? that's how it's pronounced. Seppuku? Seppuku. Yeah, it's definitely, it's emphasis on the second syllable. You sure anyway. about that? I'm pretty sure. Um, Alex, you looking that up? No. All right. I think I actually said emphasis <laughs> on the first syllable when I said it the first time. So I think Mustard Man was right on that one. So... Anyways, I'm going to use William Leslie. Uh, so I'll go from there. William Leslie, he was in that. He was also in Hellcats of the Navy. From there, we can go to uh, uh, Arthur Franz uh, in The Incredible Mr. Limpet um, mm-hmm. and go from there to The Atomic Submarine, which also has Taro Shimada. And Taro Shimada is a classic. And yes, he is. So I can get all the way back there from there. And it's probably like 17, 18 films at that point. Oh my probably. gosh. I don't even know. At this point, I just try to get into cycles that I've created before yeah. where it's potentially like 50 films. All you just got to listen to is Terry Shimada. Right. You do need to work on a thesis and just connect all this. Every movie ever made probably. but Sub movie. Yes. So there we go, guys. That's Phantom Zone. Fabulous. That's Beautiful. Zone. It's, it's sub, sub, sub. World, world, wide, 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 wide. This week, as we mentioned, we are kicking off Japanese Submarine Movie Month. And so, 
We got to do Japanese subs. So I'm going to do the Oyashio class. Wow. If I pronounced that wrong, I apologize. Almost certainly. Yes. It's a diesel electric attack submarine. And this has lots of modern advancement and automated systems that allow it to run with a smaller crew. So there are 11 of these currently active. They were built from 94 to 2008. First one was put in a commission in 1998. The length of these things are 268, 268 feet long. Oh, that's not that bad. It's longer than that German one where they were like, this is the longest one they built in. <laughs> yeah. Like, 20 feet. Yeah. What? Uh, <laughs> so it can cruise along on the surface at 12 knots, submerged 20 knots, hmm. crush depth. So this thing will operate like normally. From what I was reading, it was just shy of a thousand feet. Uh, max depth was 1,640 and a half feet. So this thing also has two <laughs> Kawasaki diesel engines. Straight out of a Kawasaki motorcycle? Well, it's Kawasaki like heavy or something oh, along those lines. I see. Uh, it has two Toshiba electric motors. So the motors that drive televisions. Right, sure. Uh, and they can generate 7,750 horsepower. <laughs> Might get my gas powered television. <laughs> 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 you gotta, you gotta choke it before you start the television. <laughs> what happened? It just went out in the middle of the game. Like, oh, I ran out of gas. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else getting kind of lightheaded in here? Oh shoot! Turn on the vents. Uh, anyways, so for weapons, it has six 533 millimeter torpedo tubes, huh. which are pretty darn close to like the 21 inch torpedo tubes. It can hold 20 80, Type 89 torpedoes or harpoon missiles. On February 1st, 2018, so fairly recently, it was announced that many of them had been retrofitted to bring them up to like current operating standards that makes them very comparable to their newest class of submarine wow. and it's extended their useful life. Other than that, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can find on them. They're kind of secretive. Of Secrets, them. yeah. That's subs worldwide. Secrets and lies over there. Beautiful, Kyle. I loved it. Yeah. Thanks. I liked it too. I do it for you, Zach. Well, thank you. I loved it, but I didn't love, love it. You know what I mean? I know. I can tell mm -hmm. when you look in my eyes. I don't want to marry it. How about that? Yeah. All right. Alex. What's up? Bro, sub news. News. Got any news? Well, once again, guys, it's really tough finding news in submarines in this world. I'll tell you what. <laughs> We gave you the hardest task we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is pretty yeah, hard. Like, stay up to date on submarine news. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not very fun. So, uh, one of the articles I read, I don't know why I read it, but uh, <laughs> Taiwan only has four submarines in their navy, and as a matter of fact, two of these submarines are from World War II. <laughs> so <laughs> this, more, this more sounds like a fun fact than a news story. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm reading this news story. Supposedly they're <laughs> they're worried about China invading them. This sounds like it's all fake stuff, dude. I'll be honest with you. But are you saying <laughs> fake news? It might be fake news. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, the the news story just goes on to discuss about how they can't really uh, replace them too easy uh, when they don't have a lot of money to 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 buy the new ones or even buy other used ones. I guess. Um, uh, it seems like there was, uh, something in place in 2001 that George W. Bush tried to help, uh, but China just basically sabotaged the whole thing from what I read. I don't know. It sounds pretty deep. Sabotage. So if you're interested in it, great. If well, not, what, what can our listeners do if they're interested? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 have no, I have no idea what they can do. To send, send money. They could, or we could send organize money. a GoFundMe page. Uh, yeah, just start yeah. a GoFundMe. Yeah, To absolutely. raise money so Taiwan can buy new subs. We'll keep it. And when we raise the proper amount, we'll keep we will it. 100% get that submarine. <laughs> now, you now Kyle, it? I got to ask you something. Have you done a subs worldwide yet on the Columbia class submarine? Not yet. That's the newest okay. one, right? That's the newest it's, U.S. It's, sub. Yes, it's forthcoming. So that is um, – turns out uh, same website that I was just referencing, this one again called National Interest, says that there's already a problem with the new submarine. <gasps> Can you guys guess? It, <sighs> it doesn't go back up. It's too big. <laughs> nope. It's nope. too big. Um, uh, it's too loud. I No, no. I kid you not. 
uh, it does not make enough money for the people who build it. Oh, it's, really? It's the, the margins the whole, are too thin. It, exactly. So it's major thin margins in that submarine so manufacturing we, sector. Of the- yep. So we may get them, or we may not if they don't get enough money on it. We'll see. Oh so we need gosh. to do another GoFundMe page. Yep. For the <laughs> U.S. <laughs> Department of Defense. <laughs> <laughs> the U.S. Department. <laughs> Just send him a check. Yeah. Hey, this is for the Columbia class. <laughs> Make it happen. Thirty-six dollars. <laughs> this is all we could raise. We have a limited audience. <laughs> uh, I'm also seeing a news article that when I looked at this, a submarine sunk by British warship during First World War, found after more than a hundred years. Oh wow! So an Italian submarine was sunk by British during the First World War. They had mistaken it for German U-boats, but the HMS uh, Cyclamen mistook it for uh, the submarine, which was the Alberto Gugliamati. Wait, it was the Gugliamati? The Alberto Gugliamati uh, submarine was sunk, and they thought it was a German U-boat. And so they sank her by gunfire and ramming off the island of uh, Capraia <laughs> between Corsica and the Gosh. Italian coast in March 1970. That would that'd be a terrible way to go down. Goodness. Yeah, so They're the, ramming us! So 14 crew members on board all <laughs> lost their lives. Dang. Yeah. So they they just found it. It was found by two Italian Navy minesweepers, and they were doing a routine exercise in the area at a depth of around 1,300 feet. Wow. That's an important discovery. That's what they say. Very interesting. Yeah. And also, just to update, next week is The Meg being released, one of the first of the several uh, submarine movies releasing this year. This year. It's pretty exciting. It's going to be about a shark, and Jason Statham's going to be in a little submersible, and I'm going to watch it, and it's going to be great. So there we go. That's not a Zach fact. I'm That's excited real to watch fact. it. It's I'm excited fact. to watch both that and Hunter Killer. I'm actually going to go watch both. Oh, yeah. We better get a sneak peek of that. Dude, you know, the Meg? I, what are you saying? I was going to say, I actually was reading another article today. Some guy's already pissed off about Hunter Killer that he doesn't think it's going to be realistic enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Comments were pretty funny, too. It sounds like People someone were, on the internet, Alex. It was, exactly. Someone <laughs> someone wasn't happy that Gerard Butler is not an American, but he's playing an American captain on this ship. Oh, God. So he's all ticked off about that. They said the wrong catchphrase or something. I don't know. Who goes who to who goes to movies nowadays for realism anyways? Come on. I don't, I mean, I go for I w- I want everything to be 100% real. Entertainment. When I go see a movie. No, no, I want it to be 100% real. Boo. Yes. So, so that's why I love this film. This movie, yeah. That Latitude Griffin zero, at the end. I was like, was, mm-hmm. uh, they're explaining the science to me. This all holds up. They're like, oh, I'm putting a brain into this lion. I'm like, 100%, that's real. Well, I'm, seeing, gotta, I'm seeing a lion. I'm seeing a brain go into it. And now this lion's flying around with vulture wings. Like, what more do I need to see to know it's real? My eyes are telling me it. Right. Yeah. So, Gosh. It's a great documentary. I can't believe you guys... And your low scores on this. It's it a wasn't great even that low. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I mean, come on. A great documentary yeah. detailing the specifics of Latitude Zero. I thought I went low with an eight. No. Well, why don't you, why why you go higher? Go I higher. Can't, <laughs> I can't put it higher than like run silent, run deep. So, uh, I'm, so I matched it. <laughs> I don't know. I think Zach, Zach and Mustard Man have shamelessly gotten <laughs> to tens and stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, just laughing. All right. So we got we got one more. Very, very excited for some Zach facts. Uh, it's hard, guys. These facts are hard. It's hard out there for a pimp. That's what I heard. But let's get it started. Do, 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 do. Fact, fact. Get your facts. Zach oh, facts. Do, 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 Zach facts. It's Zach facts. When you're going down, get some Zach facts. When you're going down. All right. Um, just a few Zach facts this week for Latitude Zero. Fact number one. Joseph Cotton would reprise his role from this film in the porn parody, Latitude 69. Oh, <laughs> I like that name. <laughs> did, are, is did everybody really, using the really same outfits? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. Every, yeah. I'm not sure it needed the titty. I think Latitude 69 would, <laughs> would suffice. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> Hey, man, that's just an uh, artistic direction. Yeah. And they'd also probably be like, Latitude 69, that's just normal, just normal latitude. Yeah. Latitude 69. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, I, I'm telling, I know what's happening there. <laughs> you can't, can't even say it. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. Fact, 
<laughs> fact number, I should have just, that should have been my last one. Um, <laughs> uh, fact number two, production was halted for three months because someone switched out the fake gun with the real gun the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God they had been in that bath. <laughs> so we had a massacre. <laughs> that would be funny. So it's so funny so they have a real gun, and like, <laughs> a person goes down, down. They're like, "Hey, you must be acting." Yeah. Now you next. <laughs> <laughs> I think the third guy let it happen. <laughs> yeah. I'll just put that in the blooper reel. Whatever. <laughs> Bloopies. <laughs> Thank God this is the fucking first thing we filmed. <laughs> Um, you, everyone likes you know. You, ever, you guys like Christmas getting gifts? Yeah, oh, yeah, no yeah. time. Well, the number one Christmas item of 1969 were giant stuffed rats. Mm. Nice. I would love to get a giant stuffed rat. I'd rather have a, the the stuffed uh, griffin. What do you? No, mean? They yeah. they didn't actually make those, Jamie. Well, no, because the griffin turns out to be a good guy. I also uh. want my coho ac- action figure. The, um, I wonder with this patented coho chop. <laughs> yeah. Coho chop. Exactly. I, yeah, that'd be fun. All right, guys. Last fact. <laughs> last one. Wow. After the success of the film, uh, Kellogg's released a limited edition cereal called Latitude Zero O's. If Ooh. you mailed in 150 barcodes, you got a stuffed eagle wing lion. <laughs> oh, and that's what I was looking for. <laughs> 150. <laughs> if you mail them in, you get a free copy of Latitude 69. <laughs> we talk Look what I got in the mail, Daddy. <laughs> Give me that, son. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> it's the best they're, fucking cereal. You're eating Latitude Zero O's for like <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Dad's just like, we got to just get through another box. <laughs> These taste like garbage. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you got a lot of titty 69s. And there you go, guys. <laughs> wow. Some great Zach facts. It is great. I do what I can for those Zach fact fans. Thanks for listening to Submersion. Find us on SoundCloud and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Can't get enough of us? Don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every Thursday. And if you like what you heard, please go ahead and give us a rating.